let's look at the next piece now, which is a piece um, I'm sure a lot of you will recognize by J.S. Bach, Jesu Joy of Man's Desire In. In this piece, we introduce a new rhythmic concept, which is that of the triplet. Now, a triplet um, is a bit tricky to count because there's no real system as such. With the eighth note, we counted one and two and it's pretty clear. Now, with the triplet, what we do is we play three notes in the time of one. So for every beat, we play three notes. So I'll just demonstrate using an open string. It would sound like one, two, three, one, two, three. You see I'm counting one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. So you could perhaps count it like that if you'd like at the beginning. You could go one, two, three. And then for the second beat, you could call that two. So you could go something like one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. You might find that helps. I think if you listen to me, you just get that sound into your ear. It's quite easy. In fact, we hear triplets played a lot of times in a lot of the music that we listen to. So you'll probably find that very quickly you just fall into the, the flow of it almost. You don't really have to think of it too consciously. The triplets are indicated by the three and the um, little line above the notes, which indicate that the three notes are grouped into the time of one beat. So we're in three, four, and you'll notice there's nine notes, three groups of three. First three, second three, third three. This piece, it's very important to pay close attention to the right hand fingering and to the left hand fingering. It also is a, almost a review of the four strings that we've covered so far. So you'll find that it goes um, quite, ex quite a wide melody, if you want, quite a wide range of notes that we use in it. So it'll be a bit difficult, but again, if you practice very slowly, Pay careful attention to what you're doing right in the beginning, and you'll find that you shouldn't have any problems. So let me play it for you. And if you'd like, you could try to play along. If not, you could listen. So I'll just count the three, the main beats. And within each beat, I'll be playing three triplets. One, two, three. Also note that we have some chromatic notes. We have the F sharp, uh, which comes sometimes on the F on the first string, and also the F on our fourth string is also sharped. So sometimes that's played, which means then that third fret F note, which we introduced, becomes fourth fret F sharp. F and F sharp. So let me play the piece again once more for you. Again, pay particular attention to the right and left hand fingering. Um, the numbers, if you remember, are the left hand fingering, letters are the right hand fingering, and letters in circles are which string the notes are played on. We also have that 3-4 um, concept again, where we have a D note, then a a G note, in this case a G note to a D note. So we use, instead of using the same finger, we go four to three. Once more. One, two, three.
Our next piece is an arpeggio study. This continues with the idea of the triplet. The entire piece is in triplets. Um, this time, it's similar to a previous study, arpeggio study that we have done, where the left hand is playing chords and the right hand is doing an arpeggio figure so that for the entire bar, the fingers really don't move, at least for most of the bars. They have a fixed position with the right hand doing all the activity, and then it switches to another chord, stays there for a while while the right hand is doing that. In the second to last bar, there's um, some interesting fingerings, left hand fingerings that you should take note of. I'll play the piece through once so you can get an idea, and then I'll talk about those points. So the arpeggio study, which is in triplets, 4-4. Four, four. So this time we have four groups of three. So I'll give, again, the four count, and then for each beat, we'll have three notes, the triplets. One, two, three, four. If you're watching my left hand, you'll notice that my fourth finger stayed down for almost the entire piece. This again is that idea of a guide finger, so that we have a reference point, that fourth finger, and the chord patterns move around that. Whenever you have a piece, if it's not really necessary that you have to lift up the finger, or if, for instance, two chords have the same note in common, then leave that finger down. You shouldn't, have, you shouldn't do the extra work of lifting it up when you're just going to put it right back. So you should take careful note of situations like that so that when you see them, take advantage of it. It makes the, um, your left hand playing much easier. If you were watching, you'll also notice that in the second last bar, I had this position in the left hand. And then the second half, so that was in for the first two beats, then what I did is I slid down those two fingers, and you notice that's marked in your music, three and four, and then I slid that fourth finger back up. So rather than going like this, and then lifting all your fingers up and putting them back down, you simply slide them down, and then move it back up. So in this case, again, the rule of one finger to each fret doesn't really apply. You'll notice from now on that that's quite often the case, that you'll have the fourth finger maybe playing on the second fret, or the first finger maybe on the second fret, for that matter. So take careful note of the left hand fingering. It's very important, and it'll make uh, your playing much easier. Also, the right hand fingering, again, is very important. So I'll play the piece again once more. And again, we simply have chords, and the right hand is doing most of the, most of the work. But the left hand is just relaxed. And when you play chords like this, when you have more than one note in the left hand, make sure you don't squeeze too hard. Very relaxed, very relaxed. And when you're practicing going from one chord to the next, watch what each finger is doing. What I mean is that you have this figure for the first bar, and then we go to this figure. So make a note, mental note, that the first, fourth finger remains, the second finger moves here, and the other two fingers lift up. You, should, you could actually go and say that to yourself. Rather than just jumping out the chord and hoping you do it, 
analyze what your fingers are doing. Fourth finger stable, first finger up, third finger up, second finger there. You'll find that by doing that, it makes it much clearer to your mind. Usually we just take it for granted that our fingers have some innate intelligence, that they can do it on their own. That's not true. It's our mind that's controlling our fingers. And the clearer you can make it to your mind, the clearer you can say, that finger comes up, this finger goes there, you'll find it makes a world of difference. And it'll cut back, save you hours of practicing time. Simply by taking the time at the beginning to really understand what your fingers are doing. So once more, the arpeggio study. One, two, three, four. Thank you.